How could anyone survive an Arctic winter in a house made of wood and earth when the temperature outside dropped to 30 degrees below zero and the wind howled like a living beast? Imagine a frozen landscape where the horizon disappears in white, where the air itself bites through layers of fur and wool. Most of us would think no human could last a single night in such a place. Yet the Vikings did more than survive. They built entire communities, raised families, and even prospered in that frozen world. Their secret wasn't magic or luck. It was engineering simple, brilliant, and centuries ahead of its time. Every wall, every roof beam, every handful of soil served one purpose, to trap warmth and keep life beating through the endless cold. What they created was not just a shelter, but a living machine, a thermal fortress designed in perfect harmony with nature. In our modern world of thermostats and central heating, we might believe we've outsmarted the cold, but long before electricity, these northern ancestors mastered it, with their hands, their instincts, and their will to endure. Today, we step back a thousand years to uncover how a house built from dirt, grass, animals, and snow became one of the smartest survival systems ever made. To understand how the Vikings defeated the cold, we must first step inside the heart of their world, the Longhouse. At first glance, it looked nothing like the tidy wooden cabins we imagine from fairy tales. It stretched long and low across the land, its curved walls rising from the snow like the hull of an overturned ship. This was no coincidence. The Scandinavians, who spent half their lives at sea, brought the art of shipbuilding onto land. They understood that a curved shape could tame the wind, letting icy gusts slide along its sides instead of striking it head on. The house itself was often built partly below ground, sunk into the earth to capture the stable warmth hidden beneath the frozen soil. From above, it seemed half buried, half alive anchored like a vessel waiting for the storm to pass. Inside this great wooden skeleton, there were no rooms in the modern sense. Everyone lived under the same vast roof. The family head, his kin, workers, and even slaves. Dozens of bodies breathing, talking, and working together created their own steady source of heat. It was a living system of shared warmth, where survival depended on unity. The longhouse stood oriented carefully to the cardinal directions, so that its broad sides caught the weakest winter sun and its ends faced away from the fiercest northern winds. Across Scandinavia, the same idea took on different forms. In Norway and Denmark, timber and clay shaped the walls. In Iceland, where trees were scarce, people turned to turf-thick, root-bound blocks of earth. And in Greenland, where even that was limited, they fused stone and soil into hybrid walls that could endure the Arctic gales. Everywhere the principle was the same, harmony between design and environment. Beneath the snow, the Viking house was not fragile wood, it was a fortress built from the earth itself. Its foundation began with a frame of heavy pine or oak posts driven deep into the ground, Fresh each standing on a bed of flat stones. These Over stones here. served a silent but vital purpose. They lifted the wood away from the damp soil, keeping it dry, steady, and strong through endless winters. Between the posts, the Vikings didn't rely on thin planks or open gaps. They built what we might call a natural thermal sandwich. First came layers of turf-thick blocks of soil held together by roots, cut into heavy rectangles like giant bricks. These blocks were stacked one upon another, forming walls nearly two meters thick at the base. Sometimes a core of sand or small stones filled the middle to drain moisture and keep the structure breathing without freezing. Every layer had its job, stone for strength, wood for framework, earth for insulation. Over time, grass sprouted from the outer surface, binding the wall with new roots, turning the home into a living part of the landscape. Inside, these turf walls trapped warm air, just like the cells of modern insulation. They absorbed heat during the day and released it slowly through the night, turning the entire building into a huge thermal battery. To the Vikings, this wasn't just architecture, it was survival science. Their homes breathed, sweated, and aged like living organisms. From afar, a winter village seemed to vanish into the hills, each roof and wall blending with the frozen earth. Yet beneath those green and snow-covered mounds, people laughed, worked, and dreamed in warmth that nature itself helped them keep. 
Warmth inside a Viking longhouse didn't come from fireplaces alone. It came from life itself. The people, the animals, and the fire all worked together in one great living machine. Step inside and you would first notice the low murmur of breathing, the sound of humans and livestock sharing the same air. About half of the longhouse was reserved for stalls where cows, sheep, goats, and horses spent the long, frozen months. It might sound primitive to us, but for the Vikings, it was genius. Every creature was part of the heating system. A single cow can release as much heat as a small furnace, and a dozen of them created a steady, natural warmth that never went out. A simple wooden partition separated the humans from the animals, but not the air. The floor where people lived was built slightly higher than the stable floor, so the rising warm air flowed upward into the living space. In this way, the animals below and the people above shared a quiet partnership. Their combined warmth filled the longhouse with a deep, living heat, free, constant, and vital. At the center of everything burned the long hearth, the house's beating heart. It wasn't a neat little fireplace, but an open trench stretching along the middle of the hall. Stones lined its edges, absorbing the fire's energy by day and releasing it slowly through the cold night. Around this glowing line of fire, families cooked their meals, repaired tools, and told stories while the snowstorm screamed outside. Peat and wood fed the flames both precious, both carefully gathered before winter came. There was no chimney. Smoke rose freely into the dark rafters, curling beneath the roof and filling the air with a smoky haze. It might seem suffocating, but that cloud was a hidden blessing. It dried the timbers, killed insects, and coated the beams in a protective layer of soot that preserved them for decades. The Vikings had turned even the smoke into an ally. Each breath inside the longhouse carried the warmth of beasts, the scent of fire, and the pulse of human endurance. Within those smoky walls, life and heat were one and the same. Above the smoky rafters, another layer of genius weighted the roof. It was not a simple cover of wood and straw, but a living shield built to fight both wind and frost. The Vikings began with a skeleton of strong wooden rafters, laid close together to carry enormous weight. Over this frame, they spread thin poles or planks, forming a deck that would soon disappear beneath layers of nature. Then came sheets of birch bark smooth, resin rich, and almost waterproof. The bark acted like the skin of the house, shedding rain and melting snow before it could seep inside. But the true magic came next. On top of the birch bark, they stacked thick slabs of turf, sometimes two or three layers deep. This heavy earth roof could weigh several tons, pressing down gently like a blanket. Each piece of turf was alive, its roots still holding together the soil. Over time, grass began to grow again, weaving the pieces into a single, breathing surface. When spring came, the roof turned green. When winter returned, it froze beneath a new layer of snow. The house didn't fight the seasons, it became part of them. As snowstorms rolled in, the Vikings didn't rush to clear their roofs. They understood something we often forget. Snow is one of nature's best insulators. The same trapped air that makes an igloo warm also protected their homes. A meter of compact snow sealed the roof, keeping precious heat inside and deadly wind outside. Sometimes the entire longhouse disappeared under a white mound, only the smoke vent and the small entry tunnel visible from afar. A Viking settlement in midwinter looked like a cluster of sleeping hills, quiet and self-contained, breathing slowly beneath the snow. This partnership with nature was deliberate and wise. The Vikings didn't build to conquer their environment, they built to cooperate with it. Every storm added strength, every snowfall another layer of protection. Their homes were not scars on the land but extensions of it, warm hearts hidden beneath the frozen skin of the north. When we step back and look at the Viking longhouse as a whole, we see more than ancient architecture. We see an ecosystem, a self-sustaining organism where every element, from the stones beneath the floor to the snow above the roof, played a role in preserving life. The warmth that filled those halls didn't come from wealth or comfort. It came from cooperation. Humans, animals, earth, fire, and even smoke shared one purpose, survival. Beyond the main hall, small buildings extended this logic. The blacksmith's forge, half buried in the ground, 
used the same principles of insulation to trap heat while staying far enough from the house to prevent fire. Bathhouses and workshops followed the same pattern, half dug into the earth, protected from wind and ice. Together, these structures formed a network of warmth and resilience, a northern village engineered not by machines, but by instinct and respect for nature. In our modern world, surrounded by glass, concrete, and central heating, we rarely think of warmth as something earned. But for the Vikings, every degree of comfort came from skill, patience, and unity. Their homes stood as quiet reminders that survival is not about domination, it's about balance. They built with the land, not against it. So as we look back through the smoke of a thousand winters, we can still feel their lesson. That intelligence is not measured by technology alone, but by harmony with the world that keeps us alive. The Vikings didn't just endure the Arctic, they mastered it, and in doing so, they left behind a wisdom that still glows beneath the snow.